What's up everybody, Dr. Rossi Shrinks at Sneakers.com. So for this week, I'm gonna give a quick bonus video here. And I wanna talk about the glutamate hypothesis of schizophrenia. So this is a huge topic in psychiatry right now. We've been really trying to come up with different ways of looking at schizophrenia and different ways of thinking about the treatment of schizophrenia that goes beyond just a basic dopamine hypothesis. So in this video, we're going to talk about what's going on with the glutamate hypothesis and why I think this is a different way of thinking about schizophrenia and schizophrenia treatment. So for years, the prevailing theory was called the dopamine hypothesis of schizophrenia, right? And the dopamine hypothesis states that delusions and hallucinations associated with schizophrenia were the result of excess dopamine in the mesolimbic pathway. Now, you don't necessarily need to know the mesolimbic pathway, but the truth is, if you're a psychiatrist like me, you should know what pathways we're talking about. So the mesolimbic pathway, excess dopamine, leads to delusions and hallucinations. Now, this pathway projects from what's called the ventral tegmental area, VTA, to the ventral striatum. And then the dorsal striatum is not thought to be affected because it's actually innervated by a different set of neurons that come from the nigrostriatal pathway. So this is all kind of complex, complicated stuff, but I'm gonna get to the point right now. And the main point is that this, lead, this is what led to the concept of blocking dopamine D2 receptors as the prevailing theory for the treatment of schizophrenia. So if you block these dopamine receptors, that's how you're going to reduce delusions and hallucinations. Now you can see the problem here, and that is the dopamine D2 receptor blockade is sort of the end result of the pathway, right? This is this is how this is this is the final part of the pathway, right? What if we started thinking about glutamate and how glutamate might be modulating? that dopamine pathway. So glutamate is an exciting new way to think about psychosis and schizophrenia and its treatment. And the theory states this, hypofunctioning NMDA receptors located on GABA interneurons in the cerebral cortex is what leads to excess dopamine, right? So I said all roads kind of lead back to dopamine eventually, and I said that that blockade of the D2 pathway was sort of the final common pathway, and, and you're, you're intervening very late in the process. So why not intervene earlier, where you have these hypofunctioning NMDA receptors that are located on these GABA interneurons? Now, GABA is the major inhibitory neurotransmitter in the central nervous system, so basically what happens is these hypofunctioning GABA interneurons, so this is again inhibitory, it's like releasing the brake on glutamate leading to overactivation of glutamate and downstream release of dopamine. So basically it still leads to dopamine, but what we see is that when you have a hypofunctioning GABA neuron and you, have, you end up pulling the brakes off or releasing the brakes, leading to overactivation of glutamate, which ultimately results in overactivation of dopamine. So if you can come up with a medication or intervention that starts at the glutamate pathway rather than the dopamine pathway, you're intervening at a higher level in the process. Now this could lead to a reduction in delusions and hallucinations. So modulating glutamate is an option which we could see as being a replacement for the current prevailing theory of simply blocking dopamine receptors. So, some complicated stuff here, but definitely interesting things, and I hope I explained it in a reasonably easy way, but this is very complicated neuroscience, but it's good for everyone to know. So if you like the channel, I just would ask you to like and subscribe to the page, and uh, stay updated with us because we have new material coming out here as well as on Instagram.